What's going on, YouTube world? It's Monday the 9th, man. Uh, I don't quite know what time it is. It's 6.53 p.m. YouTube world, YouTube community. It's your boy, Crypt, the Crypt tapping in, man, again. And I just want to do part four on me. You know what I mean? I'm going to talk about me. Instead of talking about other people. You feel me? But yeah, I said I was going to start out when I came home from YA. But in what I was seeing. But uh, before I get there. Let me uh, kind of explain what got me there. Now. I had a case pending. I'll never forget this day because this day is actually the day of the first love in my life. Birthday. And uh, it was May 31st, 1977. May 31st, 1977. I was at court for the incident with me and Jesse. Jesse was still in the county for it. He couldn't, he didn't post the bail. And, uh, I was out on my own parents' accordions after being let out of juvenile hall. And uh, we recessed for lunch. And when me and my mom was heading home, because the juvenile court was on Compton Boulevard between Rose and Spring, right next door to the bank in the store. I forgot that man's store was across from Mr. Holland's right there. Had the store right there off of Compton Boulevard years ago. Think of his name. That's my sister knew who was that guy. But that's what it was. But we was going home. Because the court had recessed for lunch. Everybody had to be back at one, two, or something like that. And people was hanging out the park. And I told my mom, I said, I'm gonna go to the park. She said, Well she said, Well boy, we we got we got to be back there at the recess now. She said, No. Don't have me come looking for your butt, she said. And, and don't you get into nothing. I said, okay, my mom won't. And sure enough, I got into something. Going in, kicking with the homies, shit, and up in the park. And I went to get some water, went to the bathroom or something. And that's when the guy flashed the cash and this, that, and the third. And my cousin pops up, and I knew he had nuts. And I was like, Cut, let's get this money. You know what I mean? So I got, I produced the gun just for intimidation. I wasn't expecting my cousin to kill a man. And uh, everybody else knows history. Uh, they considered me the ringleader or the whole shit. Gave me five years in the youth authority. I ended up doing three years. Three months and 26 days. Now, here's the trip part about it. I was released on September 26, 1980. On the, the woman I loved the most birthday. It was my mother's birthday, the day I was released. Yeah, but I came home from Hawaii because... The day I released, world was out. Okay, fag home, cause I was in my room. I was in the room. My mom's up front playing the music, doing her thing. And like I say, when homies come to your house, your mama just opened the door. You know, everybody been in your house before, man. You know, mostly. You know, back in them days. They come on back there to the room. I remember it was Pat Rat. I remember Turtle. I remember Pee Wee. I don't know if Paul and Jerry and them was in there. Uh, I think Whiskey was in jail at the time. Bird and Sammy was in Y.A. Jade Dawkins was in Y.A. I believe Bebop was in there. Bay Rob probably. It, it was quite a few homies tapped in with me. Some of them gave me some cash. One homie gave me a gat. He said, sad, cuz you're going to eat this around here, homie. You know what I mean? 
He said, it got a couple shootings on him, but he said, you was in jail when that shit happened, so you, you good. I'm like, oh, all right, cuz, cool. You know what I mean? And I remember my first night out getting in the 6 7 Chevy with Pat Rat. Pat Rat take me up to Dominguez High with a football game. Dominguez and Compton or somebody was playing that night. And all kind of motherfuckers out the by police around. I told Cuz, I say, Cuz, I'm on parole. And I can't be out here with this shit, Cuz. I told Pat Rat, Cuz, I ain't going up in this motherfucking game, Cuz. Think I seen Ken that night. Can't take that night up at Dominguez. Like, sag you on, cuz? I'm like, yeah. And, uh, so me and Pat Rat bounced. But when I got home from YA, cuz, my daddy had a job waiting on me. Plus, I was with old girl at the time. And when I came home, cuz, I was trying to get caught up on some pussy. Excuse my French. Niggas was calling me piss, pussy boy. This nigga pussy boy. Well, what is a nigga supposed to do, cuz, who been in jail three years, six months, and 26 days? Jacking off and can on, cuz. Ain't getting no pussy. What was I supposed to do? You motherfucking right. I was pussy well. Sprung like a motherfucker. And this shit was good. So, you know what I mean? I wasn't tripping off niggas on that bullshit, cuz. What was a nigga supposed to do? You know what I mean? Plus, I was on parole. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't doing no on wet, no nothing at the time. I was testing everything, cuz. You know, then I had to go on Bullets Road to see my parole officer. All they had to do was pat me down, and I would have been violated because I had carried a gun when I went up there. Because you was in enemy territory. And right across from the motherfucking apartments, them pine rules and mob niggas be right up in the motherfucking apartments. And there was some incidents where they got on a few niggas coming in there to see parole agents. So I wasn't gonna come lacking, you know what I mean? So when I get home, when I got home, I wasn't getting in no, no shit by the way, cuz I ain't gonna sit up here and lie about it. Cause like I was saying, I had a job, cuz. I had a job. Plus, I had me a woman, and like I say, cuz I was locked up for a while. So you motherfucking right. I'm trying to get on the pussy I can get. You know, and at that time, I wasn't trying to fuck a lot of broad. I was just on her. Y'all know chocolate I'm talking about. Y'all know that chocolate piece I'm talking about. Because a lot of y'all niggas was lusting for it. Back when I had that. You know what I mean? But yeah, cuz, I, I wasn't really doing much, you know, to be honest, because I wasn't trying to get violated, cuz, at all. But, um, I get off of parole, and show sure enough, cuz, and he started getting back active. You know, robbing, selling dope. Selling sherm, smoking the sherm, shit like that. Running back and forth to San Pedro, me, Sammy, and JB, and shit like that. Like all the homies know the little incident when they come to San Pedro with the sherm, thought they was going to move something, huh? Y'all remember that? Who put the brakes on that shit? I said, hell no, because y'all ain't coming out here fucking them nothing on us, cuz. Y'all ain't doing shit, cuz. Fuck that. I went off about it. Y'all remember that incident. All you niggas who was active at this time, y'all know what I'm talking about, cuz when we was in Dodge City, niggas San Pedro and the projects. That was me, Sammy, and Turtle out. I mean me, Sammy and JB out there with them with Scubs, Lil' Mike and all them cuz. We 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 been set I I I met fucking Dodge City niggas in 75. Up at Peck's Park. Before I started going up there with JB, they used to call JB Bullet out there. JB was known as Bullet in San Pedro. See, a lot of y'all don't know that incident, cuz. Cuz JB was in, man, he used to sell a mean all this shit up. Go out there and, and 
one day everything gone. Over there on um, center, second and center over there, cut over, up, up, all up over there in the projects, men with the Rancho San Pedro and shit, the Dodge City Hummers and all that. That was me, J, me, uh, me, Sammy and JB, cuz. And then when, like I say, when y'all come try to move y'all shit with us out there, we like, fuck no, nah, cuz. That was me told y'all that ain't happening. Y'all remember, y'all came up there deep, huh? And turned it around left after I started acting the fool about it. But no, SAG wasn't no factor. Uh, SAG wasn't doing nothing, cuz. <laughs> I mean, cuz, niggas trip, homie. No, I mean, but, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I was doing my thing, cuz, you know what I mean? Then me and my first love, we broke it off. I had niggas all in me and her business. And I have to get on a couple homie heads behind that. Behind that. You know what I mean? I don't want to go into details about it. But they y'all know y'all know what time it is, cuz. Y'all know what time it is, cuz. A little bit after that, cuz they got to smoking and crack, cuz. But I didn't do it long, homie. Like I explained on Care Mac, I don't even think it was two years total when we smoking crack. Because I took my ass to Mississippi in 1984 and got off of crack. I said, I'm going to go for a few months and, and get my motherfucking shit together. I said, I got to get off this shit. And I got to get as far as way I can from these motherfuckers to do it. That's what I went to my daddy about going to Mississippi. I said, Dad, well, we got family in Mississippi, right? He said, yeah. I said, I want to get away for a while. I said, can I go? Or what, you say, son, what you mean can you go? That's your family. All you got to do is get your ass there. You know, this and that, and that. I said, well, he said, what? He said, I said, well, I want to go. He said, well, when you want to go? I said, if I don't go now, right now? I said, then I won't go. So I want to go right now. He said, you ready to go? I said, yeah. I said, let me go buy a few things, this and that and that, and I'm ready to go. Because I had just got that sediment and brought that yellow um, Dodge coat. 70 something Dodge coat I had bro that motherfucker was clean I just got that sediment cuz so I went to the cop I went to swap meet cuz load up new draw t-shirt khakis and uh, Levi's you, you name it cuz got me a big ass boom box I got run DMC DMC cassette king of rock that uh, uh hey Mr. Groove won't you come back how won't you come back I got that I, you know, I just brought up a gang of cassettes, cuz, some fat backs and, and shit like that, cuz, packed me a trunk, brought me some motherfucking weed, homie, and had my daddy take me to the Greyhound station. Brought a ticket to Mississippi, left my dad the keys to my car, and I got the fuck on. Went to Mississippi. I'm, like I said, I was gonna stay a few months, get my shit together, cuz I ain't no stand till 86. <clears throat> Me and T-Bone did come down. My brother T-Bone did come down to the hood to visit November Thanksgiving um, 85. After we spent Thanksgiving with the family, me and T-Bone turned around and went back to Mississippi. So when I come back in 86, T-Bone come with me. And then my brother D-Wise came with me too. Our brother, our, our guy, brother Daryl Wise. He, 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 he left Mississippi King, California. Came out there with us. You know what I mean? So, uh, when I got back in 86, cuz, I started running with Sammy. Sammy was home from the pen. Uh, Sammy wasn't smoking no dope, no sharing, wasn't doing none of that bullshit. All Sammy was doing was fucking with women getting money. Mainly LA girls, not even Compton women. And I got to mingling with Sammy. We ended up in the common leaders. I was with Karen for a short while. They was cool. Them King sisters was cool, man. I love them girls, man. Karen, Sheila, Latisha, Latisha, man. I love you girls, you King girl. I I have nothing but fun with y'all and Sandra and them, man. Me and Sammy, cousin, the girls, man. It was me, Sammy, and the girls, homie. 
We all around L.A., Long Beach, Compton, shit, cuz, doing our thing, cuz. Doing our motherfucking thing, man. I mean, I had a ball with them, girl. I was getting manicures and shit when they, when they be up in the motherfucking um, nail shop getting this shit done. Me, me and Sammy, they getting our nails and shit cleaned up, cuz. You know what I mean? And fucking with them, girl. I mean, when I put a, I put SBC, a dollar sign on my fingers. So when I hit my weed, you can see the SBC on it. After getting my, getting my um, fingers manicured, I had to paint SBC on one nail and a dollar sign on another. When you, if I'm hitting something, you'll see SBC. You know I mean? Straight cripping, cuz. This is me and Sammy. Then me and Sammy, you know, we hit up all over the place. Plus, uh, we was fucking with Lunatic. We were from, um, we were from the 60s. I mean, from, from Palmin Oak, I mean, cuz. Thinking of my little nephew. Lunatic Palmin Oak, right, cuz? Uh, uh, oh, I mean, uh, one time it was me, uh, Sammy and Lunatic, we was cutting through L.A. We was cutting through Five Dudes BGC. I said, cut, let's swing by Big T Pad. Big T, rest in peace now. I said, cut, let's swing by Big T Pad. Big T was on 52nd place. So we swooped up, uh, up a cuz block. There's all kind of cars. So we found a place to park. It was out there deep, cuz. So when we, get out, when we get out the car and get up on them, shit, most of them were 60s. That's when I first met uh, Petey Wack. Little Hucklebuck in them, cuz, some 60s. It was at Five Deuce Hood. Cause they said, hey, cuz, let's all go on the tramp <coughs> and do this and that. And we wasn't up on the language. <coughs> Excuse me. We like, what they talking about, cuz, you know. We didn't know, but, you know, we hanging out with them, so we go. And they meant 53rd. They just didn't want to say third and, and threes or nothing, cuz. So that's when we first got up on that kind of talking, you know. And I remember we was at that hamburger stand because on 53rd and whatever that is, Maine or whatever. And uh, I think there was some East Coasters rode by, cuz. Some, you know, words exchanged between them and the Broadways, cuz. And they kept it pushing, didn't nothing go down. But we all eating burger specials, drinking shit, hanging out right there on that cone and shit. We all end up mobbing back over there to Big T House. A little late on me, Sammy, uh, 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 um, lunatic, cuz huh? we get on up out of there. But yeah, that's when I first actually met Petey Wack and little Hucklebuck them from the 60s, cuz. Huh? It was a bunch of them, at least a good 20 of them over there or more that day. And, uh, of course, the BGCs, the five deuces. Here, uh, Big T even stayed behind me. You know, the alley where my mama house at? Do you know our back house? Then you know them apartments. Then you know the duplexes, cuz, that sat on in front of the apartments at the alley in spring right there. It was a white girl there in those. That was T Woman. I didn't even know till one day I was walking up the alley, cuz, heading on Willow, and I seen T. He said, Yeah, I got a baby by her. So I'm like, Yeah. He said, Yeah, she don't really come out of it or nothing, cuz. You know? I said, Yeah, I, I didn't know. And, and uh, I've been inside there a couple of times, fucking with Big T. Big T let me come in. But yeah, cuz, uh, that's mainly what I was doing, cuz, uh, when I first, you know, got home, cuz, from why ain't, cuz, you know what I mean? Uh, I was doing my shit, certain homies, me, jack off, uh, uh, who up? Me, jack off. Baby Rob, you know, we, we got down before we, the thing. You remember? Uh, I did a couple things with a few of the homies, just a few homies. Wasn't a lot of them, cuz. Even got down on shoot with Bebop them one night, cuz. We, we went out and did our thing, you know, but talking about money shit, jacking shit like that, I mean, you feel me? The hood stuff. Just a few. Like I say, cuz, it ain't a nigga from a hood did something with every single person from they hood. It don't work like that, cuz. So, some niggas be on that bullshit when they like, oh, you on did that? You here? How you know? Because cause a motherfucker ain't did nothing with you or around you or, or something like that. So, you're assuming that people ain't did nothing? 
And then, then I got this one nigga running his motherfucking mouth. The shit I speak on, motherfucking. And at the time, I, you wasn't even fucking living in the neighborhood then. You wasn't looking in the neighborhood, living in the neighborhood then, at all, nigga, at all. And then I remember the early days, cause seventy one, two, three, four, five, six. I remember the early days. When the hood, yeah, we was deep, cuz, but it, it wasn't but about 25% of us doing some shit, cuz. Back then, it wasn't but like 25% of us, cuz. So I can name a whole bunch of motherfuckers back then, cuz I know for sure wasn't doing a motherfucking thing, cuz. So how the fuck you gonna get at me? With, the, with this bullshit and this and that and third, you know, some niggas say he went hard on you on that video. On, like I say, cause, but I don't even click on you niggas shit, homie. Because you motherfuckers ain't reveling, homie. Who, who who try to downplay me. You motherfuckers ain't reveling, cuz. To me. To me. And I ain't in no competition with your ass, cuz. You motherfucking right. I wasn't running with you. I wasn't up under your ass. That's the motherfucking truth. So... You know what I mean? Come on, cuz. You on that bullshit. But anyway, huh? Like I say, I came back in 86, huh? Now, it wasn't that long when shit started getting sour. With Mona Park, Lanny. Well, mainly the bats in the beginning. Because they, they was putting the work in. About their brother. And like I said, I never wasn't mad at them dudes. I gave them they, they respect on them. Because like I told y'all, cuz, if any motherfucker had to did my brother that way, I would have done the same motherfucking thing. The same motherfucking thing. So how you can't respect the next people fucking get down, cuz? That's a lot of you motherfuckers' problem. You can't respect the next man get down. But you want to be glorified for your own. And then, because it was around 1987, because I started changing my fucking act. Especially after Rod was killed, because. Then after him, Turtle. Y'all know I was pushing that Afro-Americans for peace, because. Which we later on changed to all Americans for peace. Because I told them, because us blacks ain't the only one who wants some peace. Everybody do. But as you know, my two partners with that jumped ship and went to our can. Left me hanging. Didn't even bring me into the fucking meetings that was being held up in them Hollywood Hills up at Jim Brown's spot. When Jim Brown was asking for me. Say, who's the guy on the news? Because that was me walking through the graveyard and all that shit when they was first doing all this fucking media shit about gangs and shit. When they first started tapping into that shit back then, it was us in the 60s that they tapped into first as well as the Pyrus though but it was us first because then was the hot spots at the time and the news the media went to where the story was so wherever the action was with motherfucking and, it, and we had plenty of action going on and y'all know the 60s did too That's why it was us featured like first and all this shit. The Santana, the 60s, and, and the Power Rules, homie. When all that shit started hitting news and all. When I was doing all that shit, cuz 48 hours, West 57, I was getting phone calls from all over LA. Sad, cuz, man, man, cuz, you sure told them the truth, cuz, homie. You, woo, woo. I'm like, what? They said, your, your, your shit, you didn't see it? I'm like, no. I still haven't seen the West 57 or the 48 hour thing, like, when they showed it. I didn't even see it. I don't know what I was doing at the time. Well, what would have been? I never saw him. Come. Never saw him. That The thing y'all saw when I said, man, we probably looked at more cars than anybody in this world. When I did all the interviews, I didn't see it the night they showed them. But everybody was calling. Great Streets, Hoovers, uh, everybody, cuz. Compton niggas, everybody, cuz. Compton niggas. 
Y'all remember when we had the colors on video? Before they released the movie colors, we had my TV in the back window in my backyard. And the word out it was in Compton that Sag them got that movie colors. You remember? I had the Palmer Blocks Cubs in my backyard watching it. They brought drinks and shit, smoking weed, drink. We watched colors. About an hour after they was going south side, little C and them showed up, cuz. I rewinded the tape, did the same thing for them, cuz. They had these drinks, we shit, cuz. We was watching colors on my TV in my backyard. But no, SAG ain't a factor, cuz. Oh, SAG didn't make no content. See, you, you motherfuckers wasn't around. Y'all niggas wasn't even around or doing none of that shit at the time. Y'all niggas wasn't fucking active, cuz. Y'all niggas wasn't fucking uh, 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 reveling at that time, cuz. But to sit up here and talk about me. But y'all motherfuckers forgot about that, huh? Y'all forgot about that, huh? Y'all remember when we, when we had the cassette colors with all the time and running, all the shit that before they even edit all the shit out the movie and all that, all that shit was on that cassette. And we had the TV in my fucking back window in my backyard and had all kind of Compton hoods pulling up to come watch Colors at, in SAG backyard. Come on, cuz. Come on, cuz. And before I converted to, to, to the red, black, and green, I put the whole city together. After that little incident with, uh, with, with, with Devin from Cedar Block shooting that hood. I put the whole city together. I did. I'm, I organized that meeting. I put it together. I got everybody. This, that, and the third. When I, when I, uh, when we broke it down to secret meetings, cuz, and all that, this, that, and the third. I put all that shit together, cuz. And if anybody else saying they did, they a motherfucking lie, cuz. I done had homies from Atlantic say, Sag, I got this CC and shit from you, homie. He said, when Dutchman used to bring us to the meetings with him. He say, say, you was about with the business. You say, cuz, we ain't bringing no lunch bills. It's time to go to work. He, he say, no, he say, he say, he said, I say, cuz, everybody pack a lunch pail. Cuz, it's time to go to work. You know what I mean? He was like, say, you was about the business, cuz. He said, when it came to this Compton Crippin shit, homie, he said, I picked that up from you. And cuz, from Lenny Drive, man. See, I'm honored, cuz. To be a true to the bone Compton Crip, cuz. True to the bone, cuz. True to the bone, cuz. You know, and I, I got some niggas saying your contribution, this and that, and third don't mean that. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. I bet it's no way in the world you could do it, cuz. Bet there's no way in the fucking world because you could bring the whole city together, but you said you was kicking it with niggas and all that and that and then your time, doing your time, bring this shit together again. Bring this shit together then. Bring the whole motherfucking CC back. Bring the CC back. Bring the copy crypt shit back, nigga. But you, you, you can't do it. You can't do it. But no, sad, sad contributions don't mean nothing. But as y'all know, cuz, I picked it up and left, cuz. The day after Thanksgiving, 1990, my woman had already moved up there around October. September, October, cuz. Me, Juan, and Mark drove her shit up there because the trailer caught on fire when, when I thumped the cigarette and it landed in the box, cuz. A car drove by, told y'all shit on fire. We pulled her, I just ran and grabbed a whole burning box and ran it off the trailer to keep the other shit from burning. And we dumped it out and shit and got the fire and then we was able to salvage some shit and all that. I come back with, with my wife stuff and some the shit burst and she said, I don't care as long as I, you here with me, I'm, I'm, that's all I want. She said, I don't care about this stuff. As long as you, cause she, then she knew I was actually coming to be with her, cuz. So I left, cuz, the hood, cuz. The day after Thanksgiving, 1990. I chose fatherhood over the hood. And I chose to raise our kids in another environment other than the one we grew up in. So there it is. Part five would be about the fatherhood. 
what what I chose to do, the things I done to support my family, etc., etc. So may the Creator bless and protect each and every last one of us from all evils, because there's plenty of them here on this earth. And despite vaccinations, I still suggest that you cover yourself up and keep your distance when you're out and about in public around strangers, and to sanitize after touching things other people been touching. I love y'all the same. I respect y'all equally. It's y'all boy the Crip and I'm tapping out.